other than the great endurance that it takes, uh, how is singing Wagner different from singing other dramatic tenor roles, not in the music, but in the singing of it? Is the vocal technique any different? It shouldn't be. My teacher told me once something that I've kept many, many years. I said, when will I know uh, I can sing Siegfried? When, when should I and when will I know I can sing Siegfried? He said, well, probably the best thing is when you know that the next morning, after having sung Siegfried, you could go back and into the piano and sing Tamino. I am one, I've always said that Wagner should be sung. A lot of people have gotten, in America, used to having uh, Wagner barked a lot, uh, with the emphasis being on the forte and the big noise and the consonants and so forth and it has warped uh, the sense of taste of what people expect in Wagner singing, I think, a little. I was taught, my teacher felt that way, and working with Wieland Wagner, he felt the same way. He said, what good is a, a forte if I can't sing a piano? Because in Wagner, there are more pianos than there are fortes. So basically, bel canto, means beautiful singing, and I think it applies to Wagner as to any uh, Italian role. And without sounding vain or arrogant, I do want to bring up, it brings up a point of my first time that I had sung in Wagner, and I don't think we mentioned this before. I sang Parsifal for my first role, and this very delightful little old lady came to me in the canteen, where there was an outdoor canteen at Bayreuth, and during one of the intermissions, from the rehearsal, rehearsal, I was sitting there and she came up and said, Mr. Thomas, I want to introduce myself and ask, uh, where did you study in Italy? And I said, well, I'm a big disappointment I didn't. I have never even been to Italy at the time I hadn't. And I said, I studied with a German in America. And she said, well, that I wonder at that. She said, I just wanted to tell you, you you're singing Wagner as an Italian would be taught to sing, and that is the way it should be. And uh, she said, incidentally, my name is Frida Leide. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I felt, you know, so honored that this yeah. great, of uh, one of the greatest of all uh, sopranos in, in the Wagner forces, would have that kind of comment to make. And that's what I tried to do. I, was, didn't ever, I never tried for the bombastic type, but, but and I think it should be. All good singing should be good singing, whether it's Wagner, Puccini, Mozart, or what. I'd like to ask you a little bit about the training of young singers. I know you do a lot of teaching, a lot of coaching. How would you go about training someone to be a Heldon tenor? Very careful. <laughs> <laughs> we need, uh, we're always in great need for those individuals who can master and endure singing uh, a long tenor role. I think there is basically an innate Heldon quality, a darker quality to the voice. And uh, as we know, many people who do start out as baritones do wind up being Heldon tenors. But the training, you know, it's people often ask, why aren't there more uh, Wagnerian tenors? And it's a supply, a matter of supply and demand in a way. And the word training that you bring up is very important. Many years ago, every one of the 70-odd the German-speaking theater, opera theaters in the world, in Germany and Switzerland and so forth, each of them had their own ring. Even if that were a provincial little mm -hmm. uh, city, you know, they had their ring. And the people, young people, were assigned the parts. Well, that is to say, then, there were a, a whole, there was a whole, uh, backlog of people who had had experience, whether they should have been singing Wagner, whether it was great, what, regardless of what, there was a backlog, a big block of people, singers, who had sung Wagner. And there isn't that anymore because the, the, in Europe, the provincial house doesn't, many of them don't do the, the ring because the, the expectations of, from the stage and the technique and, and the singers and so forth is just so great that they don't do them. So we're not getting that feeder bunch of young people into the world stages of singing Wagner, for one thing. 
So when a Wagner voice does come along, then they're also told not to do it too soon, which is very wise. One shouldn't try singing Siegfried in the first crack out of the box. So those things. And then there are, uh, why should one sing a role of, of uh, Tristan or Siegfried that lasts, uh, the music in itself is a good hour long. That means in a five to five and a half hour opera, the role itself, if you sang every note end on end, is, is over an hour's music, whereas a role like Cavaradossi is barely 20 minutes of pure music. So why should one go through that training and exertion when they can get paid perhaps the same or more for other roles? So there are a lot of discouraging things. Now we get back to the point of how do you train. When one is lucky enough to find a young Helden voice, then the Germans have just exactly that uh, demarcation of difference. Jugendliche Helden, mm -hmm. the young Helden, and the schwer Helden, the heavy. Mm -hmm. And they start with those roles. For example, a, a Jugendliche Helden tenor, a young Helden tenor, would also sing all of the Verdi roles and Puccini roles and Mozart. And, you know, a, a Tamino is sung by a Jugendliche in, in German when they start out at a young age. So carefully planning what things should be sung and what things should not. In my own case, I was always encouraged to do the heavier held and tenor roles very early in my career, and I kept putting it off and putting it off until I finally then, with Tannhäuser and then Siegfried, uh, started out, and Tannhäuser actually first, and then Tristan, and then finally Siegfried. So. I was given good advice not to do them early in the career. And so far as vocal training is concerned, the savior for the voice in anything, I come back to that, that my teacher said and that Wieland is piano singing. In other words, not give up the discipline of learning to sing Lieder and uh, oratorio and spending a lot of time in, in a lot of the roles that require a lot of good piano singing. Mm -hmm. Because the base of, of the great Wagner singing to me is piano and not forte. And that means that the whole middle voice, perhaps the middle voice is the most important thing because I spend so much time uh, in those notes from E up through G. If that area of the voice, the middle uh, high range there, the passaggio, which is so difficult for a tenor anyway, those are the notes where 80% of the, of the role is. And to be able to sing piano and healthfully in that range is, is to me, the A and O of learning to sing Wagner. Do you have any overall theories about singing in, in general, vocal technique, teaching of vocal technique? It's so individual. I think voice is a function of personality, number one. One cannot teach a voice, one teaches a person and who has a voice and it's a whole complex whole entity and, and sometimes you need to be a psychiatrist and, and a lot of other things in order to get to the, the tonal purity. I read once, you know, that, and this is to me very important, singing should never be taken away from speaking. We learn to speak incorrectly usually and actually Singing and speaking are identical in a way. And so the healthier we learn to speak, the better the base we have for learning to sing. It has been said that speech differs from song as walking from dancing. So if when I'm talking about we learn to speak correctly, then that means that there is a voice there that is being trained to say vowels and that the apparatus behind it, the whole motor breathing, that that functions. And then the only thing that a voice teacher has to do is to translate that speaking voice, that natural voice, into away from its walking state into its dancing state. So I always like that comparison. That's a wonderful analogy. The last question really borders on the same sort of thing. What lessons do you most strongly try to impress upon your students? Uh, preparedness. Uh, I found that everyone always talks about nerves with, with a performer. And I have found that 
99% of the nerves are from being ill-prepared, afraid of a certain note, afraid of the range. You're singing things you're not sure of. You're not well-prepared in it. You know your language in that particular opera isn't good. Some little thing where there is fear and unsureness, then it is not, can't possibly be a good performance. So preparedness, I would say. And, and if, if a young singer knows that, then one does everything in the world one can to, to keep the nerves under control by being prepared. Because, again, one of my old teacher's great comments was that a great career was 10% voice, 10% hard work, 10% voice, 10% luck, and 70% healthy nerves. So if then, as a teacher, I feel my greatest, we have to admit that the, the, the voice has to be there. There has to be some natural talent there. And there has to be musicality there. These are all givens. And they have to be able to work and want to work, because it's a heck of a lo hard, long, hard role to, to learn all the things you have to learn and to keep improving on them. And you have to get your technique down. But basically, I feel my greatest mission with a student is to do just that, is to get him to a point where he believes in himself, he's not unsure of anything, he has control of his nerves, that he loves what he's doing, and that he is there to serve the music. You know, the composers, I didn't bother with composers that weren't worth the dedicating yourself to. And if you choose a composer like Mozart or or Wagner or Beethoven or the, then you know this work is so profound that you could live a whole lifetime and still never plummet the depths that are there for you to search for. So with that, then I think the best thing a teacher can possibly do is, is to inspire him to be the very best he can, to enjoy the excitement of serving these great, great composers and trying to bring a little closer each day some of the things that they wrote down there so painstakingly.